You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Let's now continue our conversation this morning with a report from the Auditor General of the Federation that about uh, just how much, let's see, with so much of funds from, you know, that were allocated for COVID-19 containment and funds allocated to budgets of state ministries, you know, were underutilized, you know, for the containment and the management of coronavirus in Nigeria. We now have Dr. Tsie Tui Mebaondu to discuss this. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Now, the report here says 229.8 billion naira underutilized for COVID-19. When we see that we have a failing healthcare infrastructure, people who didn't get palliatives, people dying because of lack of oxygen, so many challenges with health, and then this, that over 200 billion naira underutilized for this. I mean, the government has said, you know, there's bureaucratic processes, administrative processes that's delaying these funds. But do you think this ex this excuse cuts it? Uh, again, it, it, there shouldn't be an excuse for such huge lapse. Now, if you look at um, countries like uh, Mexico, South, South Africa, India, they've used as much as 3% of their GDP to fund this COVID challenge. But in countries like Italy and Germany, as much as 30% of the GDP was used to fund uh, the COVID. But for us, we, do, we don't have sufficient money, and the process of disbursement of the money is so fraught with all sorts of obstacles. Using light budget to drive budgeting during epidemic or emergencies will not work. There are a lot of delay processes. We're looking for a process which we call the public finance management, where linked to the budgetary space for health, in such a way that every bottleneck, we can address it. I was expecting the government to use a lot of adaptability in budget releasing process, so that the money can go directly to where it is allocated, and it is released effectively. I know that they have talent with the monitoring of that budget, but even the monetary system should be adaptable to respond. Now, we have a 23% release of fund. What would that do? Okay, if even if we have achieved 70, 80, or 90%, we'll have seen the effects appropriately. Right. We're just having 23%. What would that do? Do Dr. So Dr. Maybe I won't do. Yeah. Oh, I, I want you to go on, you know, and share with us, you know, how different things may have been if we had hit 80% of utilization of those funds. What were the things that, you know, you, uh, you might say are likely to have been available um, uh, for Nigerian citizens if we had, you know, properly utilized all these funds? Now, the first thing is this. Let's, let's get it straight that prepare, epidemic preparedness does not start when the epidemic starts. You must have been able to do some anticipation. Now, what could have happened, number one, the stimulus for either the economy and the, and the individuals, the family you know, support system. The money you are going to dispense to different families will have been different, especially the vulnerable groups. Secondly, um, the preparations for, at the level of health system, the, the incentives for the, for the health workers, the infrastructures, like you mentioned, oxygen, um, personal protective equipment, drugs, mobilization, and then other measures to campaign in terms of advocate, advocacy. We will have had money to improve the advocacy. And then there are a lot of people that are actually impacted negatively, and business that are impacted negatively by this um, COVID-19 you will be able to stimulate them appropriately and you will be able to balance the, uh, the, the economy with such funds. The, our response will have been different if we are utilized as much as 80% of those funds. Hmm. And how best should we tackle bureaucracy and, so to speak, administrative processes that the Auditor General mentioned in terms of health emergencies like this one? The best thing is that we have to create adaptability in health budget. It is very key. Now, what we've been using to drive health is what we call the line budgeting, where you have an item, you put a budget, an item, you put a budget. Now, health does not actually run like that. I was expecting substantial input in terms of what we call marginal budgeting for bottlenecks. 
in, in such a way that you look at the budget spectrum and you identify your bottlenecks. These are the bottlenecks. You budget to free those bottlenecks. When those bottlenecks are free, the work then goes up. Then the, the other thing you need to do is to uh, aggregate budget around a particular problem. Okay, so that you know when the budget is aggregated and the budget set, you free it. Let's look at an example now. We're having oxygen supply challenge in the whole country. You focus our budget on that. We're having PP challenge. You focus our budget. That adaptability, where you move from line budgeting to a kind of marginal budgeting for bottlenecks, will help you. And then, more importantly, you need to be able to connect the, the, the uh, budget for the public management to that of health space. You have to improve or enlarge the health space so for, for, for activities to be prominent. So if you don't do all these things, we we'll just have the budget, because budget is an intention to spend. Right. On there, until the money is released and applied, you will not get results. All right. I, yeah. I understand the challenge of uh, accountability, but we must be able to make that adaptable also. Dr. Mm -hmm. Tui, I, 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 I want you to also you know, share your thoughts on this. Uh, would it be fair to say that I mean, in um, the last uh, I checked, we had crossed 1,500 deaths. Would it be fair to say that some of these deaths could have been avoided if we didn't have these clogs in the wheel that prevented these funds from being used? Would it be fair to say that the Nigerian government has not been able to uh, take full responsibility for the life of every Nigerian and ensure that nothing stops uh, life from being saved. And maybe that's, you know, because they've not been able to get there, that's why, you know, we, we're having this conversation this morning. And we have 1,500 plus people dead. It, it, it's sad because now we have um, the, the, the initial gain in the sense that when the first wave hit us, we're not seeing much death, we're not seeing much fatality. Um, there are other factors people are trying to interrogate that might be responsible for this low level of, of uh, death. Now, the second wave is hitting us in a different dimension. We seem unprepared for it. Now, um, if we had applied those budgets appropriately, we could have seen more. Let's not forget that you and I had just about eight naira per day. I have said budget this year, eight naira. So now, what, what are you going to do with eight naira? So this is kind of stimulation that you need to do because we need to input fiscal policy and monetary policy to change narration in this health. So we wouldn't have seen this death. We wouldn't have seen this dislocation. We wouldn't have seen this a lot of disbelief because there's a huge trust deficit between the government and, and the government mm. as it is now. Let's talk about epidemic preparedness because if you look throughout history and, you know, talking about health, this is not the first epidemic or pandemic, so to speak. We've had others, you know, you know, that have killed thousands and thousands of people, if not more. So looking ahead for the future, especially for Africa as a country, on epidemic preparedness, how best can we be prepared? And more than five years ago, we've been pushing for what we call future fund for epidemic preparedness. So, like I said, it will happen. Epidemic disasters will happen. Yeah, the disaster management cannot cover it because epidemic is a specific thing related to health. So if we really want to get prepared for epidemics, you have to start when the epidemic is here to rear its head. The key thing is surveillance, okay? Now, you must be able to pick epidemic before it starts, okay? So we have to improve our tools for surveillance. We have to, you know, engage our system and create a structure to respond. So surveillance, health workers, key. The, the, the quality of your health workers determine your response, okay? And how you motivate them. Then the health system. You know, you see, Bill Gates was speaking Few, uh, last week that Nigeria should go and focus on their health system and not be pursuing vaccines. That is true. Without proper health system, 
you put all money and everything on that health, the health, your health system, it will go down. You won't see the effect. We have to engage our health system. We have to do increase our surveillance. We have to uh, encourage our health workers. Okay, all right. and then we have to do more campaign to make people aware to take decisions that will help their health. All These right. are simple things. There is no, it's not rocket science. Doctor Tui Mebawondo, thank you so much. Um, thank you. We always love uh, speaking with you. And um, thanks for stepping in this time again. Thank you. All right. Um, you know, I would just quickly say, you know, that I hope it's not um, too late. Um, yes, it has been said that those funds were underutilized, but if they're still available, um, I hope that they can still be put to use. Um, my own, you know, concern has always been um, having a government that knows that it is accountable and should be held accountable for the life of every Nigerian. And they should be able to, you know, be, be told to their face that you failed to protect 1,500 people if they did fail. Um, we cannot continue to have a government that fails to take responsibility and continues to push the blame left and right and never stands up to say, yes, we failed in this aspect and we maybe could have saved lives if we had acted faster or if we had acted smarter. Um, 200 billion naira would have built numerous isolation centers, would have you know, built up numerous oxygen um, um, plants. Would have, now, it's, when did we start? I think it was last week or two weeks ago, the government or the presidency was talking about giving out funds to build oxygen plants yes. and, you know, across the states. Um, these things would have been sorted out a long time ago, um, but they weren't. You know? And so um, we, we need to have a government that really understands that it is responsible and it is its uh -huh. responsibility, um, responsibility to, to protect every single Nigerian true, life, not true. just from the insurgency, but from health crisis and from failures yes. here and there. And uh, just to repeat or reiterate what uh, Dr. Tui said, really, we need to become adaptable because people's lives are on the line. And you can't say you need to bureaucracy, money has been disbursed or money... The funds are available, and you say maybe somebody needs to sign this. It will take ten working days. You have to come back. I mean, people are dying every second. It is. So we need to really become adaptable when it comes to disbursing funds for health emergencies like this. It is because nobody is going to, you know, call out uh, the head of a ministry or department mm -hmm. or some agency in the government and say you failed to protect these fifteen people that died in this community because there were funds that were available that could have gotten there and could have provided them with the health care that they needed. So because nobody is going to do that, to tell that commissioner, to tell that minister that you failed woefully. We are doing that. Um, They've actually failed. And uh, I mean, well, this, this, that's a statement on, we're making now. They've well, failed in protecting people. You know, people who, be, who have been infected and people who are still being infected, as well as the over a thousand that have died. Well, that's it here on uh, the topical issues on The Breakfast. We will now be inviting our social media uh, analyst, Booking November, to discuss what's trending in the world. Do stay with us.